Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Always so good to see those good morning wishes in the chat. Feel free to keep them coming. It's always nice to know who's worshiping with us this morning. And I am so glad that you're with us this morning, or maybe you're going to be watching this a little later today or later this week. No matter where or when, I hope that you find a sense of community and spiritual nurture in this time of worship. And I want to thank you for making the time to be present with us, knowing that we gather from places far and wide, extending the realm of God's love to all. We will be lighting our Christ candle shortly in celebration of the many joys of our lives, so you're also welcome in the chat and the comments to take this time to share what is bringing you joy this day, whether it's birthdays, anniversaries, or other special things and celebrations. We'd love to celebrate those with you in just a few moments. I am Heather Power and I'm delighted to be sharing this time of worship with you along with many wonderful people including Phil Brennan, our tech support among many other things, uh, the wonderful music leadership of Alan Ford and Tom O'Shea and the virtual choir. I also want to thank Caitlin Cormier for her leadership in today's service and to all who are participating today. And so on behalf of all of us at Norval, welcome. And so seeking true community and following the example of Jesus, all are welcome here. May, we, may this community of faith be a place of connection for all of us. And may we recognize the spark of the divine in each of us. And so as we bring our hearts together in this time of worship, we also take time to notice the space we stand in and the land that we live upon. And so let us join together in acknowledging the land upon which Norval physically stands but acknowledging that you may be worshiping from land that was walked and lived upon by ancestors different from here. If you know and wish to acknowledge the peoples from your corner of the world, please feel free to name them in the comments as part of your land and territorial acknowledgement. And so we come together for that now. And so we continue our service with gratitude and respect as we remember together that this land, this planet is sacred. We are on holy ground. Earth is our only home and we are connected with all who live here. In every season, the earth offers us wisdom. We give thanks for the gift of clarity that winter brings. In the starkness of the leaf stripped landscape, we become aware of what we did not notice before. On bare branches, chickadees perch to feed on sumac berries. Animal tracks leave stories in the snow. There is silence here too, an offer of deeply needed rest and a summons for reflection. We lament that we have not honored our deep relationship with the earth that God has created. The climate crisis, the devastation of habitats and loss of species are all calling us to learn and practice better stewardship. The Haudenosaunee, Chinantan, Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe have cared for and shared this land for millennia. Generations ago, they welcomed newcomers who entered into treaties with them. Treaties and trust have been broken. We all live with the consequences. We seek to live into right relationship with all Indigenous peoples on whose land we have settled. We commit to listening to and respecting their wisdom. In this moment of silence, we ponder what is asking for our attention. What is asking to be noticed and to be understood more clearly. And so friends, we turn to some of the life and work of our church as we share just a few announcements this morning, always reminding you of the, the wonderful digital ministries and ways to connect through the week with midweek breath on Wednesday evenings. I know many, if not all of you, receive My Daily Minute, a wonderful way to start your day or whenever you get to it to enjoy and have that pause and that time. We also celebrate the fact that your presence with us this day and every day is a gift. And so I wanna thank you for the many ways that you share your time, your talents, and your treasure with this community. And all the ways that we share our gifts support and uplift the many incredible ministries at Norville that bless not only this place, but our communities 
and the world. And so thank you for all the ways that you give. And you can support the church through donations by e-transfer, Canada Helps, check, or pre-authorized re remittance. You're always welcome to reach out to the church office if you have any questions. And again, we give thanks for all the gifts that you share in so many ways. And so friends, let us move to our celebration candle. I was seeing some lots of comments, I think, this morning. So we, we need to lift up those personal celebrations and highlights. Uh, I would like to see some comments come up on my screen and I'll share that on our behalf this morning. So Lynn sharing that it is Phil's birthday tomorrow. Well, Phil, I did not know this. So happy birthday. That actually is my dad's birthday too. So I know now I'm in excellent company. Happy birthday to Phil. Susan celebrating good friend Pauline's birthday next Saturday. Happy birthday to Pauline and I hope it's a, a wonderful day and celebration for her. From Julie, February 1st was my Aunt Shirley's 95th birthday and today is her celebration party. What a wonderful gathering that will be and wishing you all well and wishing her a very happy 95th birthday. That's just beautiful. From Cheryl, celebrating the awesome Norval communities of faith. Thank you, and thank you, Cheryl, for all the ways that you're present with us and share your gifts. We are, we are blessed here, and thank you for lifting that up this morning. Well, friends, with thanks on our lips and in our hearts, we light our Christ candle, and the flames of our candle are a visible reminder of invisible grace, the light that Jesus brought into the world, the presence of the Holy One made real by our gathering in community, in vulnerability, in curiosity, and in hope. And so we light our candle as we sing together our gathering song, Gather Us In. And so let us come together and join in our call to worship this morning. We gather to worship together. Different peoples, different lives, different stories. Yet all children of God. Created lovingly by the source of all life. We gather to reconnect with one another. Different people, different lives different stories yet all disciples of one teacher Jesus the word made flesh dwelling among us we gather with different joys and sorrows different hopes and fears different people different lives and different stories yet one people with one God one faith one baptism 
let us open ourselves to the presence of God at work in us, among us, and through us. Let us worship God. And so let us sing our opening song with the help of our wonderful virtual choir. We'll be singing Come and Find the Quiet Center. So let us pray. God of grace and love, we've come with thirsty hearts, praying that your word will satisfy us. We come with aching hearts, praying for good news to comfort us. We come with overflowing hearts, praying for a chance to share your love. You who know our hearts and hear our prayers, be with us now in this time of worship. Amen. And so I'll turn things over to Caitlin, who is sharing our scripture for this morning. Hello, good morning. My name is Caitlin Cormier. My pronouns are she and her, and I attend the in-person service with my family. Uh, this is one of them. This is one of my children. Her name is Raina. Today's Bible reading comes from John chapter 4, verse 5 to 15 in the Inclusive Bible. Jesus stopped at Sychar, a town in Samaria near the tract of land Jacob had given to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. Jesus, weary from the journey, came and sat by at the well. It was around noon. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The disciples had gone off to the town to buy provisions. The Samaritan woman replied, You're a Jew. How can you ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink? Jesus answered, If only you recognized God's gift and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him for a drink instead, and he would have given you living water. If you please, she challenged Jesus, you don't have a bucket and this well is deep. Where do you expect to get this living water? Surely you don't pretend to be greater than our ancestors, Leah and Rachel and Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it with their descendants and flocks. Jesus replied, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give them will never be thirsty. 
No, the water I give will become fountains within them, springing up to provide eternal life. The woman said to Jesus, Please give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty, won't ever have to come back to this well again. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks. Oh, thank you so, so much. Well, for this week only, this morning's reflection will be a little bit different as we've kind of set it up like a, I'm calling it a fireside chat. You see those chairs behind me. Imagine we're there, there's a fireplace, we're gathered together. Um, as members of the Norville community ask questions for me to reflect on. And some of you may have watched my farewell celebration service with Parkminster United, my former congregation. And Jennifer Allen from the MP committee there came up with this lovely idea for that service. And it was actually my MP chair there who reflected afterwards that as lovely, lovely as it was for us to have that chat at the end of my ministry with them, how neat it would be to do something similar at the start of a new ministry. So I don't know if he's going to be watching this, but Rob McQueen, this is in part dedicated with great love to you. And so when I shared this with some folks at Norville, they agreed that it would be a lovely way for you to get to know me a little bit better, as well as reflect on my call here to Norville. So I guess I'm in the hot seat uh, and we have our first question coming from Ashleen. Hi, my name is Ashley Fembo, and I am a lifelong member of Norville United Church. F from since the beginning, basically, I have been very involved in the church, being involved in very different ways, whether that be nursery, camp, chicken barbecue, teas, pancake, like you name it, I've probably done it at this point. Um, but I recently was on the search team that helped bring Heather into our lovely family. Um, and while on the search team, my role was as the youth representative. So I would speak on behalf of the youth per se, and as well as bring in a new perspective over what the church may need when going forward, um, coming from, I guess, the future generation. Outside of church life, um, I'm currently located in Peterborough, Ontario, and I attend Fleming College for child and youth care. I'm in my third year, so I only have a year left. <laughs> um, um, during the day, I do my placements with uh, one local high school, so I work with at-risk youth in the high schools, and I work also for an emergency overnight low barrier shelter um, with One City Peterborough in well, good well. <laughs> so um, I guess the first question kind of was like what kind of led you to it um, to like the ministry aspect. So thanks, Ashleen. And um, as I've shared in some of my initial introductions with you, uh, my late mother was a minister with the United Church of Canada. So I have basically spent my entire life uh, in the United Church. I was actually born on a Sunday, uh, World Communion Sunday to be exact. I arrived three weeks early and ensured that my mother was not able to conduct the two Saturday weddings or that Sunday communion service that weekend. Uh, in those times, uh, my mother returned to ministry quite soon after having me, and so my very first outing as a baby was to a church finance meeting when I was only mere days old. And, you know, I have fond memories of growing up in wonderful congregations, uh, having many fantastic Sunday school teachers. I love a good church bazaar, but as I moved into my teens, I wasn't as keen on church, and I really credit both of my parents for never pushing me, even though they both were very active in the churches where my mom served. And by the time I was graduating high school and preparing for university, I had absolutely no plans to pursue ministry. Um, I thought I might be a lawyer or a journalist, 
And so my undergraduate studies at McMaster University in Hamilton were focused on English literature with a minor in medical anthropology. And I can remember quite clearly a conversation that I had prior to an English lecture with one of my professors during my second year at McMaster. And I had taken maybe a couple of classes with him by this point, and so we knew each other, uh, a couple of them relating to the Bible and literature. And he was well aware that I was a preacher's kid, as he called it, a PK. And so then he proceeded to ask the one question that many preacher's kids are asked at some point or another. So Heather, are you going to follow your mom's footsteps and go into ministry? And I can remember like physically recoiling somewhat in horror that no, no, that, that was the last place on earth where I saw myself. And no offense to God or the church, of course, but in, in my mind, I had other things to do. And yet here I am today. <laughs> um, I always say God has a great sense of humor, and that's why some of those more reluctant and stubborn leaders in our Bible stories that I alluded to last week have always resonated with me. I definitely had other plans in mind, but as I reflect back, I'm also very aware of the many times throughout my life that I felt the presence of God deeply. And it was in my final year at McMaster when I was immersed in more Bible and literature studies uh, that my uncle, who shared the same birthday as me, died from cancer at age 50. And I can remember feeling like my world had just shattered. And I found myself turning to the Bible and particularly the Psalms to explore my grief and connect or reconnect with God on a deeply spiritual level. And it was in that time, in that grief, that I started opening my heart to the call that kept whispering to me, that had been whispering to me for years. But I wasn't ready to answer it just yet. So dot, 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 let's move to question two. And Phil's going to lead that for us. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Phil. Uh, I'm tech support here at the church now, uh, but have filled, filled many roles over the years uh, that I've been involved here. Uh, sat on the board, have been an elder, chair of the elders, et cetera, et cetera. Anyhow, it's wonderful to have Heather here, and it's wonderful to have this opportunity to uh, to have her introduce herself to us in a, a different way. So Heather, my question for you is, can you share a little bit about your call to ministry journey and some of the experiences that you've had? Thanks, Phil. You forgot to say great teammate too. You're a great teammate and really appreciate you. Well, so the dot, dot, dots continue. So after I graduated from McMaster, I was still hearing that call. But um, as you'll learn about a little bit about me, I'm sometimes a bit stutter, stubborn and I had other plans. Uh, I took a year off to travel and had some great travels through the UK and to work, um, lots of great adventures. The spirit continued to nudge me, but I had decided that I was gonna pursue postgraduate studies in journalism, and I was accepted to a program for that following September. And, well, this is where it gets a bit interesting. Uh, you see, I'm actually quite an introvert. I, I tend to follow through on things. I am incredibly hard on myself. I call myself a recovering perfectionist and a high achiever. And I think even my parents would have agreed that there weren't many moments of rebellion in my teen or young adult years. And so when I returned home after my first day of classes for the journalism program, I, their mild-mannered, well-behaved daughter, announced that even though I had a great first day and I loved the program, I was dropping out. I, I just knew in my heart of hearts that it wasn't what I was called to. And I couldn't ignore God's call any longer. I, I knew that I was being called to, into ministry and I needed to explore that call. And so from there, I started the discernment process within the United Church of Canada to explore what kind of ministry I was called to. 
I worked for that year to save for my studies and applied to Emmanuel College for that next September. And also during that time, Kieran and I continued our long distance dating with me here in Canada and him in Ireland. We married here in Canada in August of 1999 and I started my studies that September. And when I walked into Emmanuel College on that Wednesday morning in September of 1999, I knew right away that I was in the right place. And so during my time at Emmanuel, and it's changed over the years, but back, back in my day, uh, the Masters of Divinity program was a four-year postgraduate degree that invites those called to ministry to pursue. It involved three years of academic study in a variety of areas, as well as one year as a full-time ministry intern, whether it was in a congregation or in a different setting. For me, it was both a congregation and a hospital chaplaincy setting. And one of the wonderful things about theological education for the United Church is that we are graced with so many students of theology, some hoping to eventually be ordained or commissioned and settled into congregational ministry, while others pursued studies in religious education, pastoral studies, and theological studies. We came from all over Canada, even the globe, from different backgrounds, some from different denominations. For some, ministry is a second career calling, and for others like myself, it's pretty much only the only vocation we know. So I was at Emmanuel College kind of late 90s, early 2000s, and during the time that I was there, the majority of students studying were female, and the average age at that time of those studying was 43 years old. So I, along with a handful of others who were in our 20s at that time, were actually considered quite rare. And while four years of theological education is certainly demanding, many, like myself, had opportunities while studying to work with congregations. And so for three years, I was at Humber Valley United Church in Etobicoke, where I served as their youth worker, their student intern, and their staff associate, respectively. And it was there that I really felt like I learned a lot about ministry. Um, it was there that I was nurtured and encouraged by those who I now consider mentors and trusted confidants. It was there that I discovered my passion for preaching. It was there that I realized how important it is for us to encourage the young people of our congregations to grow in faith and to be a part of the life and work of our churches in ways that they want to and listen to their voices and their wisdom. Um, look, I certainly credit Emmanuel College for helping form me into who I am today, but even more so the relationships that I've developed in congregations, in hospital visitations, and in volunteer work that reminds me again and again that I've been called not because I'm anyone special, I'm just simply called and we're all called in our own ways. I was ordained in 2004 and at that time you were required by the United Church to go through what was called transfer and settlement, which is no longer a requirement, uh, but at that time you had to be willing to accept wherever you were called to across Canada in order to be ordained or commissioned and it was stressful and exciting. And I ended up being settled just outside of Barrie with a wonderful two-point charge called Cookstown Thornton, and that's where my ministry began. And from there, ministry took me to Newmarket, Toronto, and Waterloo before coming here to Norville. And so I'm going to turn it to David, who has our next question. Good morning. My name is David Soonrein. Helen, could you please share with us this morning some things in your ministry that has surprised you or excited you? Thank you. Thanks, David. Well, what ignites my passion most about ministry is that it is a continuous patchwork of relationship. Uh, you know, relationship is what we are all about. We are invited by the God who created us into a covenant relationship. God knows each of us personally, even intimately, and has called us by name. God knows our joys and our sorrows. God celebrates when we are exuberant and weeps with us when we feel despair. It is as one of my favorite professors once wrote, and I'm going to quote her here, believing that this powerful and intimate love is offered freely to me, I need to realize that this love is offered to all people, those people whom I love, and those who I do not like. 
The immense love of God for humanity challenges the way we are in relationship with one another. In knowing that God loves me so deeply, I am called to love others in the same way, to attempt to see others as God sees them. God's call to love others is not just an invitation to a love fest within our faith communities. It calls us into relationship in our local communities, our nation, and around the globe. In addition, God calls us to be partners in caring for creation through teaching, healing, being good stewards of the environment, and seeking justice for all. God's way of being in relationship with creation defines what it means for us to be in relationship with one another as an intimate, personal, and accountable community. And you know, I'm, I'm always surprised by the ways that we all have our own unique stories, but how so very often there are threads from those unique stories that weave us together as community. And that's one of the things that excites me most about ministry is getting to know people's stories, both individually and the collective stories of a faith community. To engage a person, we're invited to engage in all the stories that has made that person who they are. So I was thinking about that when I read this story about Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well in today's reading. And I've read this story many times. It's one that draws me back to ponder often. And it is the longest conversation that Jesus has with anyone in the Bible. And you know, there are a lot of stories in the Bible that involve meeting at a well. And in each of these stories, when the characters gather at a well, a thirst is quenched, a, a thirst for authentic love, connection, and relationship. We could even say that the well itself serves as a symbol of deep emotional thirst. And so in the Bible, wells can be a place of rich and unexpected encounters, a place where love is discovered, uncovered, or revealed. And I think that communities of faith are like that too. We are called by Jesus to make a contribution to the lives of others. And this is not just a sentimental journey, it is demanding, challenging, and we are expected to grow in our relationship with God and others. We, we come before God who knows our thoughts and our hopes, our every gift and our every broken place. God knows every single beautiful, vulnerable thing about us, every wonderful story and even the ones that aren't so wonderful. We come before God and God offers us that cool, refreshing water and a place to rest and listens to those stories once again. What also excites me is preaching and creativity in worship and involving and including all ages in worship. I have always loved being in team ministry and I'm so excited to work with the great team here. And pastoral care is both exciting and special to me because it is that opportunity to hear someone's story. It is often a time of great tenderness and or vulnerability, and I never take that gift lightly. It is very much the heart of my ministry, which is about relationships and connections. And pastoral care is one of the biggest blessings of ministry, and it's also sometimes one of the hardest, especially when you move from one faith community to another. And so I think of Norval, and I know how Paul was someone who knew you all so well. He knew your lives. He was someone that you could reach out to for care and support. And well, I was that person for Parkminster and some of the other places I've served. You know, it, it's hard in its own way for both parties to have that official ministerial relationship end, but it doesn't ever change the deep love and friendship and care. And perhaps what's most exciting for me about all of that is that it's always the reminder that our hearts are capable of more love. You know, a new person never replaces another. I've heard that, you know, that phrase, you know, you have big shoes to fill. Um, but I don't think I can fill anyone else's shoes. They're theirs. And I like to imagine it more like my shoes now sit beside theirs to continue the journey. And I hope that through the years, mine will become well-worn and loved in their own way. And there's real beauty that with time and building those connections, our hearts expand to let someone else in and have an equally amazing ministry together in our own unique way. 
And so I'll turn it back to Ashleen, who has our final question this morning. So for the last question, it was, where do you feel God's call? How do you feel God's call? Well, so how did I feel God's call to Norval? Well, from the moment I read your profile and met with your search team, I was so excited and inspired by Norval's forward thinking, um, your courage to be open to change and new things. I mean, this building is one of those testaments, right? Uh, your deep faith and your commitment to being involved in so many meaningful ways in the community and in the digital ministry world. Uh, I love Norval's love and commitment to children, youth and families, and all of the ways that you're welcoming to everyone. It was important to me that you are an affirming congregation and that creating a welcoming, safe and inclusive space for all has always been important to you as a community. And those were just some of the things that I felt the Spirit nudging me about. I, I felt that I had the gifts that you were hoping for, and I hope that you feel the same way. You know, it's, it's hard for me to put this into words because there's something so beautifully mysterious about call. From the moment that I connected with the search team to the first time I walked into this building, to meeting the staff team, I don't say this lightly, I, I really did feel like I was home. I felt God's movement through the whole process. And I'll be honest, it was so scary for me to think that I would leave a community that I loved. And I was beloved to them and where I had a very thriving ministry. But Norval and God <laughs> kept calling to me. And I remember talking with Kieran after one of my conversations with the search team and he's like, Heather, you can't ignore this. God is in this, I know it's a risk, but this is a call. I think it's where you need to be. And he articulated everything my heart was feeling. I was really struck and excited by Norval's can-do attitude. It's such a beautiful way to embrace ministry and community together. And there is a real sense of community here. And I mean that not only in the ways that you live out your faith together and the many ways that you reach out, but also that you are community-minded. You understand and celebrate that within community, everyone's going to have their likes, dislikes, preferences, and more but you still come together in positive and supportive ways. I appreciate your willingness to try new things while still honoring traditions that are important. And I have felt your can-do attitude in my first month with you, as I know that I bring new and different things to this place, but I'm, I'm so grateful that you're giving me the grace and space to settle in, to try things, to get to know you all and find our way together. And you know, please know that while I won't always get it right, know that I do always try my best and have the heart of this community in mind. And so I look forward to and I hope and pray for many wonderful years of ministry together. And I feel so very blessed that I was called here to Norval. And so I also, as we wrap up, want to say a very big thank you to Ashleen, Phil, and David for being the best question askers, and for those who will be doing the same at the 10 a.m. service. And so friends, may this ministry together be a blessing to us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so let's turn back to our virtual choir as they sing, go make a difference, what we're all called to do in our own way.
so friends you'll have seen in the chat because I have a habit of skipping that part. Uh, we will be sharing some prayer concerns in just a moment so we'll give you some time uh, as we come together to reflect on and share the yearnings, the struggles, the joys of in our, our lives and so if you have any prayer requests this day for people, places and situations near and far, I invite you to put those in the comments and the chat for us to share. Also yes I saw a comment from Tom Auger, the choir is rocking it and making a difference. They are. They always do such a great job, but that was a really fun piece. So thank you, Tom and, and Alan and everyone who made that such a beautiful piece. And thanks to folks for your kind words about the reflection this morning. It's uh, always a bit scary <laughs> to get vulnerable, although I love vulnerability. So thank you for sharing those with me this day. And so if there are any prayer concerns, we'll share them at this time. And so Deanne, please pray for a friend, Bill, who will have surgery this Wednesday morning at Western Hospital in Toronto, and certainly keeping Bill and all who will be caring for him in our prayers. Thank you for sharing that with us this morning. From Cheryl, continuing to pray for Jess this week, definitely Cheryl lifting her up and certainly you and all who love and care for her as well. Thank you for sharing that this day. And so knowing that we have prayers that would rest in our hearts, let's take all that we have shared, the celebrations we shared earlier, as well as those prayers within our hearts into a time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. Loving God, gather us together in community this day, remembering all people are your beloved across races, nationalities, religions, sexual orientations, and all the ways we are distinctive from one another. We are all manifestations of your image. We are bound together in a network of mutuality and tied to a single garment of destiny. You call us into your unending work of justice, peace, and love. And so in your divine presence among us now, let us delight in our diversity that offers glimpses of the mosaic of your beauty. Strengthen us with your steadfast love and transform any fatigue into Sabbath rest and hope-filled action. God of justice, we turn these prayers in the midst of Black History Month and are mindful of the deep-rooted systems and injustices against Black, Indigenous, and people of color. We pray for those who mourn, those who suffer and share their pain and experiences of racism, inviting others on the journey of justice and healing, those who allow their hearts to be broken by this pain and are moved to listening, learning, and transformation. So many things are happening in our world that we sometimes cannot wrap our minds around. We give thanks for glimpses of the sacred in all of the little places, in all of the things we have to do in any given week. We give thanks for your presence with us and through our connections with others. We remember and pray for those who are ill who are awaiting surgeries, who are in hospital, who are grieving losses in their lives, caring for loved ones, struggling with mental health. When our patience is frail, help us to hold fast to our graciousness and sensibility. When we feel empty and adrift, may we turn to our faith in this community for strength and support. We pray for places around the world where there is violence, tension, and political unrest. We pray for the Two-Spirit LGBTQIA community and for all who publicly, intentionally, and explicitly affirm that all people are beloved children of God. We pray for the earth and all of creation. May we witness all of its beauty and contribute to healing the brokenness. And so we take time now in sacred silence to lift up the joys and concerns that we've shared this day, as well as name those things held deep within our hearts.
compassionate God, we ask that you would open our hearts to the needs of all who thirst. Give us courage to work together for justice, to stand alongside those who are thirsty, so that all people everywhere may live without want or fear, and may discover the abundant life you promise to each one. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the source of living water, we pray. Amen. And so we come to this morning's closing song, Arise, Your Light is Come. So friends, the light of Christ that is with us in worship is a light that we are called to take to the world with us. And so may the smoke that rises from the candle be a reminder that the Spirit goes with us into the week, leading us and calling us to deeper faith and joy. And so the may the call of God not just call us from but toward a love so compelling that we are willing to trust our whole self into the embrace of the Creator, into the abiding love of Christ, and into the sacred dance of the Holy Spirit. And so friends, we go forth in the peace of Christ. Blessings on the week ahead. Amen. Thank you.